I often get asked what my favorite wildflower is, and my answer has become very clearly, they're all my favorites. Native prairies are really unique in the Midwest and really in North America. There's so many intricate relationships between plants and soil and water and insects and everything. It's very, very cool. Of the original 175 million acres of prairie in North America, we're down to two or maybe three percent. And there is a fabulous opportunity to use solar arrays, which are producing renewable energy, and the land underneath solar arrays to address the issue of biodiversity and ecosystem restoration. The more you live in this world, the more you start to understand and see the, the, all these interrelationships. These plants are totally dependent on insects. Habitat is critical for our pollinators. And it's not just floral resources, floral habitat. They need nesting habitat also. So it's both of those, food and shelter. Native prairie species are tantamount. They're very important to our native pollinators because they've evolved together. And so the plants are dependent on the bees to come pollinate them. And the bees are dependent on the plants for food and for nesting sites. So the whole thing is just a wonderful ecosystem. Our nation, perhaps our world, is facing both a crisis and an opportunity. The crisis is we need renewable energy, we need to get off of fossil fuels. Part of that crisis is our land biodiversity. When we think about the hundreds of thousands of acres of solar footprint, what better use than to make it into a win-win situation? So now we can generate electricity, but under those solar panels, we can generate pollinator habitat, plant habitat, soil enhancement. It's just absolutely no brainer. We're all trying to figure out how to green the grid, and there's a lot of different solutions. And today we're standing at one, and that is uh, solar energy uh, installed near consumers. But the special thing about this particular field is it incorporates prairie plantings, which gets twice the value from the land. We get the solar energy over the long term, and then the prairie plantings have a variety of other benefits. So in, in 2014, Connexus Energy built the very first pollinator-friendly solar project. One of the first phone calls we made in thinking about pollinator-friendly solar was Dr. Marla Spivak at the University of Minnesota. A key question was, if we were to use a couple thousand acres of solar farms developed here in Minnesota to provide benefits to pollinators, would it make any difference? And the answer we got back was a resounding yes. If you plant it, they come. That's what we've seen. Combining solar with pollinator habitat, there's a win, 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 win. I mean, it just keeps winning. <laughs> What's really exciting about projects like this one is the opportunity that they have to meaningfully benefit adjacent agriculture. So some agriculture, some specialty crops in the United States, a lot of the most delicious ones depend on pollinators moving pollen between flowers. Our farm is located in central Minnesota. Um, I'm the third generation on this farm. Farming has evolved a lot, even in my lifetime, really. And through that all, certainly have the margins have gotten a lot tighter. And so a solar site, like, like we were fortunate enough to have, has really helped diversify our farm's income, provided a stable source of income for us. The pollinator mix was interesting to us because finding places where you can welcome biodiversity and welcome pollinator habitat is a win-win. They now have done scientific studies that farmland near a solar array has like a 20% increase in productivity. The farmland that needs apples, melons, that needs pollination. Agricultural innovation is absolutely thriving on projects like this because once you have a pollinator-friendly landscape, 
you're able to do a limited amount of honeybee placements outside the fence to have delicious honey that really connects with people. It gets people understanding that, you know, energy is not scary, it's, it's delicious. There are so many opportunities, and, and we're just beginning with this. But what Prairie has done here is the example. It's the proof of concept that we need to show, because solar arrays all over the country need to all be doing this. As we grow from less than half a million acres nationwide to more than nine million acres of solar farms just within our lifetimes by 2050, we all have a choice about what goes under and around the panels. And the opportunity to do something meaningful, we have to attack these two problems at the same time. We need more clean energy, but we also have to address the biodiversity crisis. When we bring back our prairies and we bring back many diverse species, combining pollinator habitat with solar arrays, it just makes a wonderful statement. And the statement is we care, we care about our planet, we care about our natural resources. We care about our bees. So more native plants on solar farms is a fantastic opportunity to do something meaningful that'll scale and have an impact. <laughs>